Hello again, it's Dr. Jordan Taylor, undergraduate exercise science program director and associate teaching professor at the University of Kansas. This is the second video in a three-part series where I am discussing complex training and post-activation potentiation. In this video, I will provide an example of how to incorporate complex training in a weekly microcycle for an athlete. In addition, an example of how to design a single lower body complex training workout will also be shown. The chart displayed here shows a weekly microcycle for an athlete, a football player, that is entering the strength power phase of their off-season strength and conditioning program. The strength power phase is typically four to six weeks in length. It often begins in mid-July and ends in mid to late August, just prior to the start of the competitive season for a football player. Each week of training during this phase is focused on achieving peak strength and power to optimize athletic performance right before season games begin. So let's take a look at how complex training can be incorporated into this football player's overall weekly schedule. So if we look at the start of the week on Monday, you can see that this athlete's going to perform upper body complex training. So they may perform an exercise like a barbell bench press, that's the resistance training exercise, and then there'll be a rest period prior to performing a plyometric exercise, maybe like a, an overhead medicine ball throw. They will also train on that same day for speed development. So they may do some sprint technique work, some over speed training, under speed, under speed training, things like that. They will not work on agility or change of direction though. That's the COD on the chart. Tuesday then will be a day where lower body complex training is performed. So they may do a resistance training exercise like a barbell back squat and there's gonna be a rest period and they'll follow that with a vertical jump, or maybe they do split squats for the resistance training exercise, and then they do uh, a set of split squat jumps, all right? There will be no work on speed development or sprint technique on Tuesday, but they will work on agility and change of direction development. Then on Wednesday, they rest, right? Need a good rest day in there. We don't want overtraining to set in. Thursday, back to upper body. So we're basically repeating Monday's workout on Thursday. They're also going to again train on Thursday like Monday for speed development and there is no agility or change of direction work being done on Thursday. Then Friday is going to basically be a repeat of Tuesday. So lower body complex training will be performed. No work on speed development and sprint technique but they will train agility and change of direction. And then the weekend they get to enjoy themselves have the weekend off to rest and recover. This next chart is an example of how a complex training workout session for a lower body day can be designed. So if we look at this example, you know, for a single lower body workout session, the first column shows four different resistance exercises. The second column shows plyometric exercises that are biomechanically similar in their movement pattern and can be paired with each resistance exercise. The third column shows rest period links between performing one resistance exercise set and then a plyometric exercise set. So if we look there under resistance exercise, an example here in this workout is that the athlete will perform the barbell back squat. Four sets by five repetitions at a heavy load, 87% of their one repetition max. That's going to help with the potentiation effect. Now, they're not going to perform all four sets prior to conducting the plyometric exercise. They're just going to perform one set of the back squat for five reps. Then they're going to rest four to eight minutes, right? So that they're fully recovered and not fatigued before starting the plyometric exercise. Then they'll go and do a set of depth jumps. And the focus there is going to be on vertical jump height and explosion, right? Putting force into the ground, ground reaction force propelling you upward. So they'll do one set of five reps there. Then they would rest, go back to doing their second set of back squats for five reps at 87% of their 1RM. And they have a four to eight minute rest period before they do plyos again and they do their second set of depth jumps, all right? So you kind of get the pattern here. So then the second resistance exercise in this workout on their lower body day 
which again, remember, is going to be on Tuesdays and Fridays for this work uh, for this athlete. They're going to do dumbbell Bulgarian split squats. We're going to demonstrate this in a subsequent video. But again, a set of those, four to eight minute rest period, and then they will do their plyometric exercise, which in this case, the paired plyometric exercise is split squat jumps. Again, focusing on vertical jump height and propulsion off a single leg, front leg. Third resistance exercise is Romanian deadlifts. So again, they're going to do one set, five reps, again at a heavy load, 87% of their one rep max. We're really trying to turn on the central, peripheral, and, and muscular system. Okay, central nervous system, peripheral, and muscular system. Um, and then they're going to rest four to eight minutes and then do repeated barrier jumps. In this case, hopping over barriers and working on horizontal or forward propulsion of the body, right? So we're working on producing force horizontally, whereas the previous two resistance training exercises and uh, plyometric exercises were working on vertical propulsion, okay? So Romanian deadlifts really trains the hip extensors, the glutes, hamstrings, um, and that's going to be great for generating force horizontally, and then that's paired with the horizontal uh, barrier hops. The last resistance exercise is barbell alternating lunges. All right, so now we're working in a different plane. All right, we're working in the coronal or frontal plane. Right, and a lot of people, m many athletes do sagittal plane movements, you know, forward back, but they're not working in the frontal plane, side to side, medial and lateral. Okay, and that's important to develop this uh, coronal or frontal plane movement because most sports involve change of direction, right? We're, we're not just operating in a sagittal plane forward and backward. We're also changing direction in the coronal or frontal plane. Okay, so barbell alternating lateral lunges. Do a set of those for five reps. I dropped the repetition maximum down a little bit, the load to 80% because, um, you know, oftentimes athletes are weak when performing some lateral movements. Um, so again, drop the, the load down a little bit but it's still moderately heavy. And then after that resistance training set of barbell alternating lateral lunges, the paired plyometric exercise is single leg lateral jumps. So they're gonna focus on exploding off the right leg, landing on the left, exploding off the left, back to the right, okay? So this is focusing on, again, explosion in that frontal or coronal, pl coronal plane from side to side, okay, to develop that change of direction. And again, the rest period, four to eight minutes between the resistance exercise and the plyometric exercise there. You should now have a better understanding of how complex training can fit into an athlete's overall strength and conditioning program. In part three of this video series, which is the next video I will release, each lower body resistance and plyometric exercise shown in the chart I just discussed will be demonstrated. I hope you enjoyed this fitness fact video. Thanks for watching.